Hello everybody, today we'll be going over CSES problem number 1194, Monsters. This problem is similar to CSES problem number 1193, Labyrinth. We have a similar maze setup where the person starts at point A. One difference is that the endpoints are now any reachable cells on the border of the maze. Reachable cells are locations where the person can exit. The other difference is the presence of monsters, who move at the same pace as the person. The person must never occupy a cell that a monster does at the same time. For input, we have n and m, the dimensions of the maze. After that is the maze. Periods are empty cells, hashtags are walls, a is the starting point of the person, and m is the start point of each monster. There is exactly one a in the input, but there can be any number of m's. For output, if the maze can be exited by the person, we want to print yes, the length of the shortest path, and the exact steps taken. If the maze cannot be exited, we want to print no. Let's take a look at our sample case. We have five rows and eight columns. The person's marked in green. For the monsters, I've gone ahead and replaced them with monsters we are all familiar with. Time limit exceeded, wrong answer, and memory limit exceeded. To stay consistent with this theme, I've marked the possible exits with all correct. The person needs to make it to an all correct as fast as possible without encountering an error. The shortest and also only way to go there is to go right twice, down twice, and then right once. The person cannot go down as there is a monster, and the person cannot go up as there is a wall. Thus, the only other possible direction to go is left. However, we can see that if the person goes left, they will eventually encounter a monster and get eaten, meaning this pathway is invalid. Thus, the other exit is not reachable. Let's take a look at some observations we can make. Cells can only be entered if the person arrives before a monster. We have fixed endpoints, which are reachable cells on the border. To see if a person can reach an exit, we want to see if the person can reach it in the shortest path possible. However, if a monster can reach it in a shorter path, then that cell is not reachable. We have multiple ways to go from either a person or a monster to the endpoints. To find the shortest path, we can use BFS. Let's take a look at what this BFS would look like. We need to first start from the person and determine its distance from every endpoint. After that, we store the path information because we need to reconstruct the path at output. After that, we BFS from each monster and determine the shortest path from each monster to an endpoint. If an endpoint is reachable, it means the person must reach it before a monster. Thus, if there is at least one reachable endpoint, we want to output the shortest one. If there are no reachable endpoints, we indicate so by printing no. Let's start with a naive way to BFS. We can individually BFS from every monster, computing the distance from a monster to any cell. Let's look at how our TLE monster moves. First, a cell with a monster has a distance of 0. It then spreads out in the cardinal directions, visiting the next unvisited closest cell every time. We now have every empty cell's distance to a single monster. Next, let's look at our wrong answer monster. First, let's look at a naive way to BFS. We can individually BFS from every monster, computing the distance from every monster to every cell. Let's look at how our TLE monster moves. First, a cell with a monster has a distance of 0. It then spreads out in the cardinal directions, visiting the next unvisited closest cell every time. We now have every empty cell's distance to a singular monster. Next, let's look at our wrong answer monster. Next, let's look at our wrong answer monster. It marks its current cell with a distance of 0, and then the closest points with distances of 1, as to get to the wrong answer monster, these cells need to take a path that is shorter than that to the TLE monster. It continues to convert points that are closer to it than TLE, spreading out through the maze. We can see that certain cells have been revisited, an inefficiency we will address later. Finally, our MLE monster overrides its current cell and then the one under it. The issue with our naive BFS is that cells are revisited. Complexity is worsened as there is a worst case possibility that each monster visits every cell. Thus, we need a more optimized approach. To do this, we can use multi-source BFS. We start by pushing every single monster into the queue. This means that they're all processed at the same time, so no cells are revisited. This means no cells are revisited, as since every monster is in the queue at once, a cell's first visit is guaranteed to be its shortest. Let's look at how our monsters move with this change. They first mark all their own cells with zero and then spread out nearby. After that, they continue to spread, making sure every cell is marked only once. Using multi-source BFS, we have many starting points. 
Every monster cell has an original distance of 0, and the BFS spreads out and only visits each cell once, since BFS will process the closest cells first. The runtime is now O of n times m, as at worst case, the BFS will need to process every single cell in the maze. Finally, let's look at the person's BFS, as it is the same for both approaches. It simply spreads out to the nearest unvisited cell every time. We now have a distance from every cell to a person and a monster. We can see the bottom cell is closer to a monster than a person, so we'll mark it as unreachable. However, the right exit is closer to a person than a monster, so we can exit there. Since we stored the path info during the BFS, we can reconstruct our path backwards from the exit to the start. Let's finally look at the implementation for this code. We read in the dimensions of the grid and the grid. We push every monster into the queue and then start our first BFS. We determine each cell's minimum distance from a monster. After that, we push the person's position into the queue. We conduct another BFS, determining each cell's minimum distance from the person. We also record the directions taken to arrive at cells for the path reconstruction. We then check every valid border cell. If a person cannot reach any of the cells before a monster, then we output no. Otherwise, we need to begin path reconstruction from the closest reachable one. This approach has a time complexity of O of n times m, as in the worst case, every cell in the maze will be visited once. This approach has a memory complexity of O of n times m, as we need to store the maze. That's all for the general explanation, I will now go over C++, Java, and Python solutions. First, we'll take a look at the C++ implementation for this problem. First, we'll define some global variables. We need the dimensions of the maze, the maze itself, each cell's distance from a monster and the person, vectors to control the direction of traversal, a direction matrix that will use to store the directions each cell was arrived at for path reconstruction, and variables to store the distance of the closest exit and then its position. After that, we'll define a function for our BFS, and then our check valid function which we'll be using to process the border cells. Before we get to their implementation, let's look at our main. We'll read an N and M, and then we'll resize our maze to store the N rows, We'll resize the monster distance and the person distance to the same dimensions, and then we'll resize direction to the same as well. Monster and person are set to int max to make sure the first time they're reached the path is shorter, and direction is marked with negative 1 just to indicate it hasn't been set yet. We initialize our queue for BFS, and then we set variables for the person's position. After that, we loop through the end rows, and we read in each row of the maze. We process each row, checking for the person. If we find the person, then we set that cell's distance to the person as 0, and then we save its position. If it's a monster, we mark the distance to a monster at that cell as 0, and then we push that position into the queue. After that, we get started on the BFS for monsters. Now let's look at our BFS implementation. While our queue is not empty, we take in the current cell, and we pop it from the queue. We loop through the four directions, and then we compute the next cell we want to go to. We check if it's inbounds, if it's not a wall, and that we haven't been there before. If all three conditions are satisfied, then we mark its cell with a current distance plus one, and then we'll indicate that we reached this current cell from the current direction. Note that during the monster traversal, some values will be set, however, they'll be overridden during the person's BFS, ensuring accuracy. After that, we push the next cell into the queue. Moving on, we can do the BFS for the person, pushing in the person's position into the queue, and here, the direction arrived at each cell from the person will be set correctly. After that, we'll check border cells using our check valid function. If the cell is not a wall, and the person can reach it before a monster, and the current cell is closer to the person than a past result, then we save the distance and then we update the position. Moving on, we need to check if the top and bottom rows at every column are both valid. After that, if closest distance is still in max, it means there is no valid result so we print no. However, if there is, we need to print yes and the closest distance. For path reconstruction, we have a result string to store the path and a convert string to convert the integers in direction as they correspond the direction row and direction column into characters. While the exit cells are not equal to the person cells, we store the direction the cell was arrived at and then we convert it to a character and add it to res. After that, we subtract direction row and direction column from closest row and closest column respectively to ensure that the updates are done in reverse so we can start making our way from the end to the beginning. After that, we reverse our result string since we built it from the end to the beginning and then we finally print our result string. That's all for the C++ implementation, now I'll go over the Java code. Now I'll go over the Java code. For our global variables, we have n and m, the dimensions of the maze, the maze itself, 
dist monster, dist person, and direction. The dist monster matrix stores the distance from each cell to the closest monster. The dist person matrix stores the distance from the person to each cell. Direction stores the direction each cell was arrived in by the person. We'll be using the direction matrix for path reconstruction. We have direction row and direction column, which we'll be using for traversal. And then we have closest distance, closest row, and closest column. Closest distance stores the distance of the person to the closest exit, and then row and column store its position. We have our BFS function, and then we have our check valid function, which checks if a border cell is more optimal than the current one. Now let's get to main. We'll read an N and M, resize maze, resize dis monster, dis person, and direction. After that, we'll read in each row of the maze, and then we'll set each value in both distance matrices to a very large number to mark that they haven't been visited yet. For direction, we'll just mark it with negative one for the same purpose. After that, we'll create our queue for BFS, and then we'll create variables to store the position of the person. After that, we'll loop through and process each cell of the maze. If it's the person, we need to mark its distance as zero and then save its position. If it's a monster, then we need to mark the monster's distance at that position to zero, and then we need to push it into the queue. After that, we'll start our BFS for monsters. For the BFS implementation, while the queue is not empty, we'll take the current cell. After that, we'll loop through the four directions and compute the position of the next cell. If it's inbounds, is not a wall, and has not been visited yet, we mark its distance with the current distance plus one, save its direction as the current direction, and then push it into the queue. Note that for direction, when we do the monster BFS, some values will be set. However, person will override them, ensuring the path reconstruction is still correct. After that, we'll BFS for the person to calculate the distance from each cell to the person. And then we need to check our border cells with both distances calculated. First, we'll be looking at the first and last column and every row in those columns. Our check valid function will check if the current cell is not a wall, if a person can reach it before a monster, and if that cell is more optimal than the current one. If it is, we'll update the distance and also the position. After that, we'll loop through the top and bottom rows for the same reason. If the closest distance does not exist, we print no. But if it does, we print yes, the closest distance, and start our path reconstruction. The converge string converts the integers in the direction matrix to characters. While the endpoint does not equal the start point, we'll store the current direction the cell was arrived at, and then we'll convert it to a character and add it to our result string. After that, we'll reverse the changes made to row and column to ensure we're moving backwards. After that, we'll print out the reverse of result since we made our string from back to start. That's all for the Java approach for this problem. Now let's take a look at the Python code. Now let's take a look at the Python solution code for this problem. Note that this solution was compiled with PyPy for all correct answers, otherwise there'll be a time limit exceeded error. First, we'll read in n and m the dimensions of the labyrinth, and then we'll define our maze with those dimensions. We'll create the monster distance matrix to store the distance from every cell to a monster, and then we'll create the variant for the person. After that, we have our direction matrix. We'll be using this to store the direction each cell was arrived at for our path reconstruction. After that, we have our arrays for traversal, and then we have our convert string, which we'll again be using in path reconstruction. We have our closest distance, which stores the minimum distance to an exit point from the person. And then we have closest row and closest column, which store the position of that cell. We have our BFS, which we'll use later for traversal. And then we have our check valid function, which checks if a border cell is reachable by the person before a monster. After that, we have our queue for BFS, and then we have variables for the position of the person. We loop through the maze and check if it's a person. If it is, then we mark the distance to the person at that cell to zero, and then we save its position. If it's a monster, then we mark the distance from a monster to that cell as zero, and then we push it into the queue. After that, we start our BFS for monsters. For our BFS, while the queue is not empty, we take the current position and then move in all four cardinal directions for the next cell. If the next cell is inbounds, is not a wall, and that cell has not been visited, then we update the distance and then update its direction. Note that for the monster BFS, some values in the direction matrix will be affected. However, the person BFS will update them at the end, ensuring the answer is still correct. After that, we'll push them into the queue. After that, we'll BFS from the person to get our values for comparison. After that, we can look for border cells that are valid escapes. First, we'll be looking at the first and last column and every row in them. Our check valid function checks if the current cell is not a wall, if a person reaches it before a monster does, and if it is more optimal than a prior found path. If so, we update the closest distance and its position. After that, we do the same thing, checking the first and last row in every column inside them. 
If a path to an exit does not exist, we print no. But if it does, we print yes, the closest distance, and start our path reconstruction. We have our result array, and then we'll start working backwards from the end. While the endpoints don't equal the start points, we store the direction the cell was arrived into. We convert that integer to a character using the convert string, and then we reverse the changes made to row and column to work backwards. After that, we'll reverse results since we made our string from back to start. That's all through language approaches done. Thank you for watching this video.